The water temperatures over the Atlantic, unfortunately, are much warmer than average, with, and this is expected to continue as we approach the later months into the summer of June, July, August, which is why I believe that this could potentially become a hyperactive hurricane season, especially since the um, water that's the most above average is right over the main development region, just off the Windward and Leeward Islands, and that's definitely the most concerning, because let's say if the warmer water temperatures were just so north of this area then it wouldn't be so bad but considering that most of the um the water that's well above average is located right over the main development region where the most convective activity occurs in the hurricane season that's just a recipe for disasters which is why which is a big reason why i believe this hurricane season will be hyperactive potentially and potentially historic with the other factors i'm gonna show you a little bit later in this video but even headed further westward we see the warmer water temperatures extend into the caribbean as well and then the gulf of mexico right now we do have some patches where it's a little bit closer to average the water temperatures and some patches slightly below average however for the most part it's above average so we should still expect an above average amount of tropical cyclone activity over the gulf of mexico but even if it was closer to average it might not matter even matter that much because most of the tropical cyclone um, activity occurs right over the main development region and still could reach all the way to the gulf coast states and um and that um and the gulf of mexico being slightly closer to average won't play a big role in terms of limiting the amount of tropical cyclones this hurricane season since most of the activity typically occurs over this area Another thing that points to a potentially hyperactive hurricane season is the fact that we're going to be most likely in a La Nina pattern by the time we approach the most active hurricane season months, where by the time we approach August, September, and October, the most active months of the hurricane season, it's a likely 80 plus percent chance. So it's almost guaranteed at this point we're going to be in a La Nina, and a La Nina plays a big role in limiting tropical cyclones because... There's far less wind shear over the Atlantic. This is thanks um, to the fact that the equatorial Pacific um, during a La Nina sees sea surface temperatures that are cooler than average. So we see more of a sinking motion over this area. If we were to see a rising motion, of course, there needs to be an equal amount of sinking air that is equal to the amount of rising air that would go on over the equator Pacific. And during an El Nino, we see the sinking motion occur more towards the Atlantic where it's outside of the warmer sea surf temperatures over the equator Pacific. But in this case, the sea surf temperatures are cooler here so we're gonna see more sinking air and stability over here which takes away a lot of the sinking air um, from the Atlantic and not only that with the sinking motion in the atmosphere that means that there needs to be um, there it needs to absorb a lot of air surrounding um, where the air is having a sinking motion which means that the winds will primarily move from the east in the upper levels of the atmosphere which means which will go in the same direction as what the trade winds at um, typically go towards during the hurricane season which reduces a vertical wind shear as well so thanks to the fact that we're most likely going to be in a strong La Nina, you should expect much more hurricanes than usual this hurricane season. And here's how different hurricane seasons compared um, depending on which type of Enzo pattern your um, the hurricane season has. And we clearly see that during La Nina hurricane seasons, we see far more tropical cyclones. And what's interesting is that much more tropical cyclones also move well further west where this thanks to the fact that the westerly wind, upper level winds are a lot weaker during La Nina. So the Gulf Coast is certainly more at risk when it comes to hurricane landfalls during La Nina as compared to in El Nino where we see far less hurricane um, hurricanes than usual and the hurricanes that do develop typically typically move more um, likely out to sea rather than making landfall along the Gulf Coast and the, even the East Coast of the United States. Another thing that I think is important to take a look at when determining how active this hurricane season will be is taking a look at years that have conditions that are very similar to what we're experiencing this year and the years that stand on um, which are referred to as analog years and the years the hurricane seasons that stand out to me are the 1995 1998 hurricane season as well 
as the 2010-2011 hurricane season, extending into the 2016 hurricane season, and the 2021 and 2022 hurricane seasons as well. And the reasons why those years seem very similar to what we're experiencing this year, and it's good to look back on those years, is the fact that all those hurricane seasons transitioned from an Enzo pattern into a La Nina pattern um, as we approach a hurricane season where all these years had an Enzo pattern or potentially an El Nino pattern during the spring that transitioned into a La Nina pattern by the time we approach the summer or the hurricane season, which is exactly what we're going through right now. We're currently in an Enzo pattern that is expected to build into a La Nina, which is um, which is what this year has in common with all the years I just listed. And I think it's important to take a look at those years to determine how many storms we'll see and where exactly storm tracks will go so here's the 1998 hurricane season and as you can see it was more active than usual not just when it comes to the amount of tropical cyclones that developed but also the amount of hurricanes and we did see a decent amount of hurricane landfalls more specifically this hurricane um that made landfall right over puerto rico and into pretty much just slammed through the caribbean before ma uh, making its final landfall in the United States and then we of course have this other tropical cyclone that made landfall right around the southern coast of North Carolina and we did have a couple other tropical storm landfalls in the United States so um, based on this we could expect the hurricane season to be more active but let's take a look at other years as well. So here's the 2010 hurricane season as the 2010 hurricane season was actually one of the most active in history. Thankfully, we didn't see many major landfalls this hurricane season. We did have Hurricane Alex that made landfall just south of the Texas border right over the east coast of Mexico. And we um, and we did have uh, some, some tropical storms make landfall over Louisiana. We had tropical storm Bonnie in 2010 make landfall in Florida and eventually Louisiana and the biggest tropical cyclone during um, this year was Hurricane Earl, which did brush the outer banks of North Carolina, but would eventually move out to sea. So thankfully, there weren't a lot of landfalls this year, but still far more active than usual. And typically when we, um, and of course, when the hurricane season is more active than usual, the chance of landfalls inevitably goes up with it. Here's the 2011 hurricane season and again it was more active than usual and of course a big storm this hurricane season was Hurricane Irene making landfall right over um right over Cape um Cape I, I forgot Cape Lookout, North Carolina, and then just moved up the East Coast, pretty much just hugging the Delmarva Peninsula, the Jersey Shore, and then making landfall in New York City as a tropical storm brought billions of dollars in damages and plenty of flooding. So this hur uh, hurricane season like this is certainly capable of bringing very powerful storms um, towards the United States. But overall, in general, again, more tropical storms this year than usual. The 2016 hurricane season is very similar in the fact that this hurricane season was much more active than usual. The big storm in this hurricane season was Hurricane Matthew, which just pounded Haiti, Cuba, and eventually it brushed the southeast coast with very strong winds, heavy rainfall, and thankfully it didn't make landfall in Florida as a Category 4 hurricane, but it still brought plenty of damage throughout the southeast, and we also had Hurricane her mean make landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida and brushing the northeast a little bit later as well. But again, more proof that this hurricane season will likely be more active than usual and is certainly capable of bringing a powerful storm to the United States. Same thing for the 2021 hurricane season. I remember this hurricane season very vividly here in North New Jersey as throughout the entire year, we just got pounded by the remnants of tropical storms moving through. We had tropical storm Emily, we had tropical storm um, Henri make landfall, and then of course the remnants of Ida was the biggest one just bringing a ton of flooding here over New Jersey and the Northeast in general. And of course, Ida make la made landfall as a, nearly a Category 5 hurricane over the New Orleans area. So a hurricane season like this is certainly something we don't want to replicate. But unfortunately, based on conditions we're seeing, it's likely going to be more active and we could see plenty of strong tropical cyclone landfalls throughout the United States as well as the Caribbean. 
The 2022 hurricane season was a bit closer to average, but we still saw very powerful storms, um, more specifically Hurricane Ian, which made landfall as nearly a Category 5 right over the Fort Myers area, becoming the third most costliest disaster in U.S. history. And of course, we had Hurricane Nicole make landfall over Florida as well, so it still brought very strong storms right up along the coast, so you definitely need to be prepared for that possibility um, throughout the Caribbean as well as the United States. All the hurricane seasons indicated that there could be at least maybe one strong storm as well as plenty of tropical cyclones um, develop, um, developing. Of course, another big thing we need to take a look at is the wind shear anomaly um, based on the most reliable computer models. Um, we're using the CAN SIPS model um, with this one, which combines a lot of the reliable models to create the most accurate forecast. And based on what we're seeing, it's certainly not looking good because if we were to approach a July timeframe, we see that there is large area where the Caribbean is experiencing below average wind shear. But unfortunately, it gets even worse. That eventually extends into the main development region into the August and September timeframe where the wind shear is well below average as this suddenly concerns me because below average wind shear um, enhances hurricane development so I do believe this will also contribute to the hurricane season being far more active than usual and if we were to take a look at the forecasted amount of moisture over the main development region it's certainly not looking much better we see um, much more mo um, precipitation is expected than usual over the main development region and the entirety of the Caribbean and even extending in up along the east coast of the United States so this this makes me believe that this hurricane season will be very historical um, based on what we're seeing from the computer models as well. So here's my hurricane season forecast in general. So I use the new average, which um, which takes the average amount of storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes between 19 um, the hurricane seasons of 1991 and 2020. The reason why I use the new average is because during those years we were, for the most part, in a Atlantic in a positive Atlantic multi-vector oscillation. So throughout those years, the sea surface temperatures were overall just warmer than average average nearly every year at least compared to the long-term 100 year average um, so this will give a better representation of what to expect based on the most recent hurricane seasons because of course not everyone was alive before 1991 to um, when the Atlantic multivector oscillation was at a negative phase to really feel that um, to really feel um, how a below average hurricane season will look this is a better more representation of what you should expect compared to more recent hurricane seasons and my forecast I actually risen my forecast compared to last time I'm now expecting 21 named storms um, 13 named hurricanes as well as six major hurricanes so I do believe this hurricane season will be hyperactive I wouldn't even be surprised if um, the hurricane season does exceed my forecast so you definitely need to be prepared um, as we approach the later months into the summer but remember where this hurricane season goes above your expectations or goes below it just remember all it takes is one storm so don't underestimate the hurricane season just because it might not reach your expectations when it comes to the amount of storms or hurricanes you should expect so make sure to prepare for every storm the exact same way no matter how active the overall hurricane season is so here's my forecast map regarding of on where exactly you should expect the most storms to develop, where the most storms will track towards. And I mentioned this in one of my previous videos when talking about the Bermuda Azores High. I expect the most tropical cyclones to move sort of this towards this direction. And that, of course, puts the southeast as well as the um, western, I mean, the eastern Gulf of Mexico more at risk when it comes to landfalls. But in general, the entire United States coast should experience um should experience a landfall probability that's well above average thanks to the fact that we're going to see much more storms than usual and since uh, and due to the fact that the a bermuda azores high is expected to be a little bit further westward it should be able to steer storms west enough to at least for at least some of them to reach the united states at least more than what you typically see and based on the fact that we're also in a la nina that's going to allow some more storms to be able to move further eastward and more storms to develop in i mean westward and more storms to develop 
in general so definitely be prepared for hyperactive hurricane formation right over the darker reds above average in the reds and then closer to average in the oranges so make sure to prepare as we approach the hurricane season but that's it for now guys and i'll leave you guys for watching